Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the ITS Connect session for January 3rd in this new year, 2013. My name is Jennifer Laudiana. I am the Education and Training Specialist in the ITS Department, and today I'm going to walk through some basic steps on how you can use Adobe Connect, which is what we're using today, and set up your own meetings and sessions and arrangements for your groups. Um, some examples, uh, you can use it for one-on-one -on -one training. Um, so if you wanted to talk to someone and walk them through something, you could use it for that. Um, it is a free service to all faculty, staff, and students. Um, you can host meetings. You can have two or three or four or five people um, meet and talk. You can share uh, slides, documents, pages, anything on your computer. Um, you can record your meeting. So if you wanted to do a demonstration and have it recorded so that you can have a copy for use later, uh, you can do that. And then you can download those recordings and you can actually save them on your computer. So in the future, if you wanted to use them or if you wanted to link them on a website, you could do that as well. Some of the examples we've used, I've used it for training um, for people that are not in the Cleveland area. Um, I've had them use a Connect session. I've been able to demonstrate to them how to do things. Uh, I've used it to meet with people across campus. Um, it's a good way to collaborate. So you can have two or three people um, collaborate together and uh, talk about a project. You could use it to create your own webinars, which is what we're doing today. Um, so there's lots of ways that you can use a Connect. And again, it's a free service um, that we offer through ITS on campus that you can use. So how do you get started? Um, today you logged into Adobe Connect with your crew network ID and password. You would do that same thing. You would just go to connect.case.edu and log in with your network ID and password. And once you've logged in, you will be taken to your home screen. Um, there will probably be some training catalog items listed, there might be meetings you've participated in, um, and other things on your page. Uh, what you want to do to start your meeting is you actually want to just click on the meeting button, which you'll see on your screen, and create a new meeting. And that's how you want to get started. So it'll take you through, uh, similar to a wizard, which will take you through multiple steps. I think there's three or four screens we'll talk about. And you will be able to set up what you want your meeting to be like. Um, you can set it up to be restricted. You can set it up for only certain types of people can have access to it. You can have um, it be open to everyone. Uh, you can set up a specific URL. So if you want users to go directly to that URL, you can do that as well. So you can see on your screen the enter meeting information page will appear. And on the very top, there are two items, um, the name and the custom URL. The name field is what you're going to name your meeting. So if you want to come back to this meeting later. Um, if you're going to reuse your meeting, um, we, you can do that as well. So if you want to create um, Jennifer's meeting space, and I want to call it uh, connect.case.edu slash Jennifer, I can use that and then name it Jennifer Space. And when I want people to meet with me on Connect, I can just give them that URL and allow them access to that meeting space. Um, so you do need to assign a name. You do not have to have a URL. Uh, if you don't put one in, uh, Connect will actually assign it a random uh, URL for you. And you will get that when you're done setting up your meeting. So I talked about the required fields, name is one, and then there's also a language drop down. So it will default to English, um, but you can change that to whatever language you would like. Um, I named this example I used the ITS session. Um, you can also create a custom URL. And in the bottom it says when creating that URL, make sure it's only alphanumeric characters and hyphens. Um, you can also see that there is a random URL so you can see what that looks like. Um, it says connect.case.edu slash r and a bunch of numbers. So it's a randomly generated one from Adobe Connect. Um, so it will do that if you don't want to create a specific URL. And you can give that out to people as well. 
So as we're walking down this meeting screen, um, which if you go to try this, you'll see all of this, um, but there's a summary area and it's a box where you can just enter free text. So if you wanna create a meeting space for your department, you might wanna put what it's for, the name of the department, um, any kind of information for uh, identifying that meeting space. So it will describe it beyond the name of the meeting. Uh, you can put in a start time. Um, it will default to whatever date and time you're starting uh, to put together your meeting. You can leave it that way so it'll just be open. Um, you put, can put a start and an end time if you want your meeting to close. You can also say the duration. So you can choose from um, all of the different times from up to, I believe it's 10, 24 hours in the drop down. Right here I have uh, one hour, so in zero minutes. Uh, lastly is a template. Um, there are a few templates you can choose from. I believe there are three um, templates available. Uh, you can create your own templates. That's a more advanced item. Uh, the default that it automatically goes to is shared templates default meeting template. So if this is your first time, you might want to start with that one um, and work through it and then maybe t start creating your own templates in the future. So again, I mentioned the language. Uh, the other t thing you will be entering is the access. And you will get three options. Um, they will have little radio buttons. You'll have three options to choose from. The first one is only registered users may enter the room. So that means only people that you have allowed access can use your meeting space. Um, it does not necessarily, um, ha no guests would be able to enter, and it would only be crew people from Case Western Reserve that can enter the room um, because the uh, login is information is all based on your network ID and password. So if you only want those people that you have set up to use it and they're from Case Western, you could use only registered users may enter the room. The next option is only registered users and guests. So you can allow people from crew, Case Western Reserve, and you can also allow others. So if you're having a collaborative meeting maybe with others from other universities, um, they could log in as guests and you could have also people from Case Western Reserve log in as well who would be registered users. Lastly, is anyone who has the URL for the meeting can enter the room. And this is anyone. So if you give out the web address, the URL that you created um, to someone at another company, another university, to your mom, anyone that you want to enter it, they can enter the room. Um, and that means people won't be able to find it. They'll have to have that web address to be able to enter the room. And they can log in as with their crew network ID. They can be guests but they must have the URL to log in. It will not be a public URL. The last section on that screen will be your audio settings. So if you need to include a bridge number or anything like that for people to call in, you can put that information there. Um, do not, the other option is do not include audio conference. So if you don't have one, that, then you can check that box and you can just tell people in an email or if you're going to work through it um, on your voice over IP on your computer, uh, they wouldn't need a phone number or information to log in. So you can use that as well. So that's the first screen you'll walk through. Those are all the items you'll see the first time you're setting up a meeting. Um, then you will click the next button at the bottom of the page. And the next thing you'll be doing is entering your participants who are going to be coming into the meeting. So if you have it set for registered users, you're going to need to allow them to come in. Uh, one thing to keep in mind as everyone who is in Connect uh, sometimes people have not logged in to connect before, so you may want to check the participant list, and if someone you know is a Case Western Reserve employee, you may want to contact them and let them know if they log in to connect, then they will show up on the participant list. Um, otherwise, you may have issues with them trying to log in, and it will tell them they don't have access. Um, just have them log in once, and they will show up on the participant list, um, and then you should be good to go. Um, this is what the participants page looks like. So on the left-hand side, you will see all of the available users and groups here 
um, this is starting with A, that are available. Um, on the right hand side you'll see the current participants for the meeting that you're setting up. So yourself will show up here. So in this example I was logged in with our training ID and that person is always going to be the host. So if you are creating the meeting you will always be the by default, you will be the host of the meeting. If you want to find people, there is a search option here. And what you would do is you can click on that search button at the bottom on the left, and you would type in, start typing in the name, first name, last name, um, and it will start matching things. So in my example, I typed in LOU, which is the start of my last name, and I started to get people with those combinations in their names. LO, my name is right here. Um, so when I found my name, I could click on my name and hit at the Add button to add myself to the other side. So if I would highlight my name in green, I can click the add button underneath and then now on the right hand side on the participant side you will see the ITS training who is the host and then you will see myself as a participant and by default all the people that you're adding to the right hand side are going to be added as participants um, there are multiple levels so as I said you will be the host by default um, those that you add will be participants by default. Um, there are also other ways that you can change those roles. So there are actually three roles, the participant, the presenter, and the host. And they have different levels of access. The host is more like the administrator. They have the most access. Uh, the participant would have the least access because they just need enough access to be able to use the chat box or be able to access the files that you're uploading or anything like that. Uh, be able to control their own audio and video. The other is the presenter and if you are hosting a meeting and you have multiple presenters you can have people have the presenter role which means they will be able to share their desktop, share their files, but they don't have the same administrative rights as the host. So once you have gotten all of your participants into the right hand side, if you are doing that, if you want to have registered participants and you've set up their roles, um, again you can choose to have anyone who has the link which then you would not need to do that. Uh, then you would click the next button. So you've gone ahead and the first thing you've done is you've set up all your criteria for your meeting. The next thing is you're adding your participants and setting up roles. And then the next button will give you the option to send email invites if you would like to. So this is the third step you're going to have to send invitations. If you do not want to send invitations, there is a button here, do not send invitations, and you can skip this step. Um, but if you do want to send them, um, you can choose who to send it to. Uh, there is pre-filled options. If you want to send it to everyone, the default is all hosts, presenters, and participants. If you only want to send it to participants, you can choose that from the drop-down, only to presenter, only to host, or if you want to choose who you want to send it to. Um, the subject line can be edited. Um, it will default to the name of your meeting um, that you have. It'll say Adobe Connect meeting invitation in the name of the meeting. Um, if you want to edit that, you can. Um, you can attach a Microsoft Outlook calendar event. If you know that your users are all Outlook users, you can select yes for that. Um, if they are not, I would uncheck that if you're not sure or if you have a mixed group of email users. And then the bottom section here is your body. It will automatically fill in with this information. You can edit that information. Um, it'll say, please join me in this meeting. It'll s automatically fill in the name, the summary information that you put in. So that's another place that it would be used. Um, it will put in who invited you, when the meeting is, time zone, and give you some more details. If you put in audio information and all of that, that will be in there as well. And you can edit that. So if you wanted to put in a paragraph about details about the meeting um, that you want are specific to maybe the participants and you're sending a different one to the presenters telling them okay this is how you want to upload your presentation here's instructions you can put all of that in your message body um, invitations are optional. Again, I said just make sure that you click the Do Not Send Invitations button. Um, you can edit the text box. Um, Connect will populate for you. Um, just make sure that if you choose not to send invitations, double check that that Do Not Send button is there. Otherwise, it will send them out for you um, <clears throat> to the default that is there. 
So once you've sent that, that's the third piece. So the first is to set up your meeting, second, uh, decide who's gonna be in your meeting, and the third is to send or not send invitations. Once you've completed those three steps, you can click on the finish button, which will be at the bottom of the screen and then your meeting is ready to use. So it will bring you back to a screen that describes your meeting and you'll see the name, the summary that you put in, the start time duration, the URL, and you'll notice in mine I did not put a custom URL. So it will give me the URL so you can cut and paste that um, to send to people if you need to. Um, it'll tell you how many are in the room uh, when you're setting up. So if you come into your meeting and people have already gone in, you'll see how many are there. Um, the language is English and then it will also tell you the access. So this particular meeting is only registered users and then accepted guests. Now one thing about guests is there is the option that you can actually allow or deny. So as guests are logging in to your meeting, you will see a little pop-up. It'll say a guest so-and-so has asked to join the meeting, accept or deny. And if you accept them, they will be input into the meeting. So that's a nice way too if you are allowing guests um, that you can make sure you know who they are and accept them into your meeting. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to enter the meeting room, which when you come back in to reuse your meeting, you will always want to enter your meeting room. And you would just click on that button there. And it may ask you to add an Adobe Connect add-in if you need it. Um, if you don't need it, it will take you right into the room. But there is a little add-in. It does use Flash Player um, to run the meeting. So make sure that you have the most up-to-date Flash Player and that you do accept the add-in when the pop-up comes up. So here's what a meeting room looks like. I'm gonna give you a little tour of this default uh, for your first time. You might wanna use this um, and see how it works for you. And then as you use Connect More, you can go in and change things. You can rearrange pods, you can add features. Again, like I said, if you want to create your own template for meetings, you can do that as well. Um, so on this screen, you can see we have this tab across the top that has various options regarding your meeting. This will change depending on if you are a presenter, a host, or a participant. So as participants today, you probably do not see all of these items on the top of your screen. Um, on the left-hand side of um, the screen, we have the attendee list, um, which you can uh, not see today. I actually have it off screen. Um, there's also a chat box, which you will see in the bottom left today, that allows you to chat with others as well as chatting with me. So you can type in questions or comments or anything like that if you have any issues with hearing or seeing any of the video. Um, and then the bottom one here that defaulted is a notes pod. And that's where you can type notes for people to see. So if you wanted to keep track in a meeting um, of your parking lot of issues or questions, you could use that notes pod for that as well. It also has a little bit of a GUI interface. So if you wanted to change colors, uh, use different types of fonts, um, there is a small GUI interface here. You can also change the size of the font. So if you're working with others and you might want to make it larger, um, you can actually make the pods larger larger or smaller. I'm going to do that with um, one of them here on your screen. You'll see me change it. It'll get a lot smaller as the chat pod. Um, so you can make them smaller, bigger, um, however that works for you. So let's take a little tour. And then the center section here is your share section. So you're seeing the PowerPoint I'm using on my screen and I'm sharing that with you using this big share section in the middle of the screen. So the next thing is we'll walk across the top, your meeting room default. So you saw across the top you should have different things like this. As a participant, you won't have all of them. Um, so the meeting drop down here, if you click on that, you will get a drop down of various ways to manage your meeting. Um, it will have audio checking, it will have where you're going to record your meeting, and some other options so that you can actually manage how you want your meeting to run. The layouts drop down will change how it looks. So the default right now is sharing. So it's going to come up with, as you saw previously, the ribbon across the top, the share in the big center, and then on the left there was the chat, the notes, and the attendee pod. So that, that's the default um, and what you're going to have there. Now other options that are listed are discussion and collaboration. Um, and those look a little bit different. They have some different pods, so you're welcome um, to use whichever works for you. I would suggest maybe playing around with them and seeing how they look. 
Uh, the, another one in the meeting drop down are the pods in the layout. You can add various pods and that's up here in the center um, to create your own layout. So each of the little squares that you see on your screen is a pod. Um, so on the right here, I've pulled down some of the options. So attendee list is a pod. If I don't want that, I can click on it and it would take that check mark away and it would go away. If I wanna add another one, so let's say I wanna add um, the webcam, which you'll see that's what I'm using today on the top uh, left-hand side. You can also do a file pod, different kinds of file pods, which will allow you to upload files so that the people watching, participants, can actually download those pods. Um, you can use a polling pod, so you can create a little questionnaire and the participants can answer that pod and then you would get the answers back and you would see the percentages based on the question that you asked. Um, and there's also a Q&A pod. So again, you can go in and you can choose whatever you want to put up there. Um, one advanced feature is there is something called a presenter space. And that is actually where you can put pods aside and you can pull them out later. So if you had, um, at the end of your presentation, you wanted to show everyone links, you can actually pull out the file share pod, have it already set up and have it pulled out at the end of the presentation and you would have it there so people could click on the links and download download the information in the files. So across the top you saw there were little icons here. I'm going to walk through what those do. Um, again, this is all the, what you see as a host or administrator of a meeting. So this icon is setting your audio. So you can click on the drop down here and you can turn off your speakers. You can mute the conference audio only and adjust your speaker volume. Or if you don't have any audio, you can turn it off. Um, if you're meeting with someone by phone and you're just using this to collaborate, uh, you could turn off your audio. The little microphone is where you're gonna set your mic levels. And this is where if you click on this, this little white icon means it's off. Um, if it's green, that means it's on. So if you click on this, you'll connect your audio and your options will be you can disconnect it. Again, if you decide you're not gonna use that, you can mute yourself. Um, you can adjust your volume. So if you wanna talk with someone else and you're using your computer, you would use this mic level and this volume here with your audio options. Um, the option with the little camera, if you click on it, it will start your webcam. You do need to have the webcam pod activated, which on the top left of your screen today, you'll see me in there, and that's auto uh, automatically set up. You can also click on the raised hand. If you're a participant, this is very important to remember. Um, if you want to click on that and click on the drop down, there are a lot of options. So if someone does a quick poll, they might want you to click that and say, can you tell me if you agree or disagree? Um, if you want uh, to check your sound, you can have people use it to tell you if you need to speak slower, faster, um, if you want to do that, if you want to just raise your hand and say I have a comment, you can click on that and it will show up as your raised hand. So that's walking through that top ribbon. And again, remember, this is what the host sees. Um, the presenter and the participant don't see as much. Um, and in the very center, you're going to see Share My Screen. And this is one of the most important things about Connect because you can share um, all kinds of different things. You can share your screen, which is what um, you can do if you want to share a web you want to browse the web together, if you want to show them a website you're working on, if you want to show them something on an application, if you're training someone on how to do something. I do some training on PeopleSoft Financials, and I have done that where I've actually shared the application and I've walked through it so someone can watch me move through the application. Uh, you can also share uh, documents and PowerPoints, which is what I've done today. I've actually uploaded the PowerPoint into my uh, connect session and then I'm sharing it with you. Uh, you can also share a whiteboard that will come up and it will have the tools on the top and you'll be able to draw, write, circle, whatever you need to do to demonstrate on the whiteboard option there. Um, the documents, again, I mentioned that. If you want to flip between documents, what you can do is use this recently shared option. And what that will do is it will give you the list of the documents that you have recently shared. So if I had another document I was going to flip to, I could actually have both up and I could flip back and forth in my sharing. So I could go back here and say recently shared. I could stop sharing one, start sharing the other, and I would be able to see that. 
So now that you've set up your meeting, you've got your pods set up, you know what you're gonna do, you're gonna actually host your meeting now. So you've sent out your invitations, you've got it all set up, you're gonna host it. And one thing you wanna do is you wanna record it because some people cannot attend. So you're gonna record your meeting so that you can let others see it. Um, in order to do that, you would click on the meeting menu on the top left along the black ribbon and choose record meeting from the list. Um, and you will get this box, which will allow you to name the meeting. Um, it will default to the name of the meeting and a number. So if you've done multiple recordings, it'll say zero, one, two, three. This one says nine. Uh, we've done multiple ITS Connect sessions, uh, but you can name it whatever you want. And then you can also put in a short summary if you want to, and then click on the OK button. And once you do that on the top right, you will see a red dot show up. And this will be the recording dot to tell you it's recording. Um, so throughout your presentation and throughout all of your audio, that will all be recorded until you tell it to stop recording. Um, if you want it to stop recording, you can click the red dot on the top right and select stop recording and that will stop. Or you can go up to the meeting drop down if you're the administrator and the host and click meeting and record meeting and it will turn it off. Um, so what the recordings are for is you can give it to others to view. You can keep an archive of your training that way as well or your meeting or your one-on-one -on -one session or however you're using Connect. So once you've done your meeting and you've recorded it, now you want to get your recording. So to do that, or if you want to reuse your meeting. As I said, if you want to just create a meeting that's your meeting that you use over and over and over, you can do that. And to do that, you would log in to connect.case.edu with your crew network ID and password. Uh, you would click on the meetings link at the top and then you would choose the meeting from your list. It will actually have a list of all the meetings that you have set up or that you have been part of. Um, so keep in mind, if people have included you on other meetings, you might have those as well. Um, when you get there, you're gonna see all your meeting information. This should look familiar. You can enter the meeting room if you're doing another one, or if you want to look at your recordings, you can click on the recordings uh, option, which is at the top right. Um, you can also run reports about your meeting. You can see how many people have attended and participated. You can view your invitations. You can edit participants. So if you have a meeting room that you're reusing, you might want to go in and change some information. You can edit the information. The most frequent thing you would edit is probably your security options, um, the three different options for people to attend. Um, you can upload content, which is another advanced feature that we aren't going to talk about today. And then here is your recording. So once you click recordings, you're going to get a list of all your recordings. So I only have one that I did for this example. Um, if you click on the name of it, it will start your session and you will be able to see your Connect meeting. Um, the edit option is a very simple editor. I'll just be clear on that. Um, it's a good way if you want to edit out like beginning and end or large gaps or where you're trying to figure something out, um, you can go in and clip out things. So it is a very simple editor if you want to use it. Um, make offline. This is what you're going to use to actually download your video um, if you want to keep a copy or archive a copy. Um, so if you click on that, it'll actually download the video and you can save it. Um, as a flash file and you can have an archive of the meeting or event that you have recorded. And again, it will tell you the date it was recorded in time and how long it was. This one was 22 seconds. And that's how you can actually access the recorded meetings, um, which is a really good, nice thing to have. Um, I like looking at them now and again. So that is a very quick um, and simple getting started. Um, so now you should know how to log into Connect, to set up your meeting. There are three screens in the wizard, um, how to um, use your default share layout, which is what we used, how to record your meeting, and then how to view, edit, or download your recording. Um, again, this session will be recorded and it will be posted on help.case.edu and you will be able to get it under the training on the left hand side under videos. So look for it in the next couple of weeks um, and we may put an announcement when it's there.
And just to give you more information, um, help.case.edu, if you go to the training on the left-hand side, there's Adobe Connect. There are a lot of information there. It's a very robust page. It has videos, it has manuals, um, it has a quick reference guide. Uh, also, there's a link here to the connect.case, which is all of the help links. If you are ever in connect and you click on help on the top right, um, it will take you to this page and there's a lot more detail there from Adobe Connect. And lastly, we do have printed connect guides. If you would like to request one, they are quick reference guides. You can request them at help at case.edu um, by emailing them and just indicating what you need and how many and where we should send them. Um, just a quick overview of the Connect page. This is what the training page looks like. On the left-hand side, you'll see the manuals and guides I spoke of. And it looks like we're out of time today. So if you have any questions, you can email me at help at case.edu or training at case.edu, and I can try and answer your questions or send you in the right direction of where you need to go. So thank you for attending today, and hope to see you at the next ITS Connect session.